Hi, welcome back. Welcome back at Clint's workshop again. <laughs> I've been on holiday recently. I've, I've only recently just come back. And uh, <clears throat> dramatic experience I had of uh, being attacked by a squadron of seagulls after my donuts. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't a very uh, nice experience, I can tell you. But uh, I battled them off and saved three out of four. <laughs> anyway. Um, what we're going to do today is um, um, we're going to look at a, a three-jaw chuck again, but one that's working this time. And um, <clears throat> but first, I want to tell you that it's a little bit different. Uh, I would how I'm doing it today is because if you remember, um, I did a short video on, on a, a camera mount. Well, I'm using the camera mount now, <laughs> no hands, and it's uh, a camera mount for the lathe, which is, is on the video, so we're going to uh, sort of evaluate it and see how it works today. Uh, so we're going to be looking at this a three-jaw chuck, and I know that some of your more experienced people uh, I say, oh no, it's all old stuff, but remember, there's some people who are just coming into turning and complete beginners, and what's what's easy for you experienced people some of them won't have experienced it they, they don't know and um, some basic things so i'm going to explain it to you and it, it, maybe some of your experienced ones uh might have not come across it the thing is with three jaw chuck um it, it's pretty common these days well it has always been very common for holding uh sort of uniform uh bar stock and stuff, round bar stock and stuff and there's not some people go through all the turning in life just using three jaw chucks when in actual fact the four jaw chuck is the most versatile chuck of them all it just takes a little bit longer setting up and stuff like that i'm going to four jaw, four jaw chucks a little bit later on anyway what i'm going to do now is to um make some adjustments to this uh, to this uh camera mount which is you can't see it but it is mounted on the uh, uh, cross slide so it was going down okay yeah, see <laughs> so what I'm going to look at is changing the jaws of a three jaw chuck this this set of jaws this is the reverse jaws now some people have got three jaw chucks what they might have bought um and the the reverse jaws might be missing so they might never ever use them and there's a right way and a wrong way of using them so of setting it up that is because you could easily if you're not experienced set it up the wrong way now they're usually numbered um like for instance there's one you see the one there and there's the two you see, oh yes, two, and that says number three. But if someone's brought a, a lathe, if someone's brought a lathe that uh, <coughs> maybe sec second hand and a little bit worse for wear, um, the, the, the chuck might not be in necessarily in, in brilliant condition, <coughs> and the numbers on the jaws are either not there especially if it's an old one or they've worn off now on the chuck itself uh, I'm going to see if I can show you some numbers on the chuck uh, then again the numbers could wear off so I've, I've oiled the slides of the lathe and I'm just winding this down here oh, just a bit. see if I get, get closer there you are that's the three jaw chucking situation so I'm going to come down here. Oh, look at this! It's uh, automatic, uh, like, like a film studio, <laughs> like a truck, as it were. So <clears throat> on this, on this three jaw chuck here, I'll just take this away from us. No, no, notice I'm using a wooden protecting piece of wood. Of the lathe bed again 
So I'm going to take this this one out. I'm going to take this piece out. This piece, this piece of uh, thing I produced earlier for a particular job. Anyway, that's that. <coughs> now when we're moving the, you can see the numbers on this. Try to go in a bit closer. Wind it in. Then you might see the numbers. Okay, so that says three there. I'll see if I can get a bit closer to it. Uh, you can just see it three, but it's a bit fine. And also, uh, that there's a two there, and we can still see it, well, I can. And then there's 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 the three. There's the two, and there's the one. But over the years, what happens is <coughs> the numbers wear off. <coughs> so if they wear off, you've got to still fix, fix it. You can still fix it without having the numbers on. So first of all, I'm going to take these standard jaws out. Okay. And to do this, we have to make sure everything's clean. Oh, you think I'm a bit uh, stickle trying to clean everything, but uh, it's the thing to do. So I'll take these jaws out. It's a bit tedious. Just bear with me. could stop the video and, and do it but then you'll miss you'll miss something okay so um, oops I'm just trying trying something here Right, so there's a three and a two and a one. So inside here, there's a scroll. I don't know if you can see it. Have you saw it's on that broken chuck inside there? There's a spiral. Okay, in there. And that spiral works on these here. So the first thing to do is to clean these as you take them out. <clears throat> There's always sort of debris and turnings and stuff in between the grooves as it were and you'll see there as well. So there's always see the bits flying off all the time. So that's one Number one out, put that to one side. Then we'll get number two out. Number three is coming out first, actually. And I'm putting the uh, the protective wood there to do this. Look, clean it, clean the jaw. In between, it's not too dirty, but it, you need to get an, a, a bit of debris out of the slides because it could impede the accuracy. Now. Here we go on this third one. So, oops. Little bits and pieces in there. So now just putting them back in if they've got bits in in between the 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 scrolls as well. But anyway, that's that. 
So we've got uh, two and three, and number one I put over there. So I'll just show you something now. Let's say, for instance, that the numbers have worn off this chuck and you can't see the number one, two, and three. But if you look closely at these, you can clearly see that this, they're different and they're set up differently. So there's a little piece there, that section there, and that's deeper, and the third one is deeper still. So that's how you know that that is number one. Okay, and it's the same with the set we were changing it for. So I'll put that there now. And before I do that, I'm just going to clean the chuck. As I say, it might be a bit boring for you experienced people, but... Uh, I know that if you put them in wrong, it won't work. And believe me... Uh, the first time I used the three jaw chuck and changed the jaws uh, to the reverse jaws, um, <coughs> I got them out of line uh, and uh, completely out of sync. So what you do is you can identify number one as that bit there, with the smallest piece there. So that's your number one. Okay. Now before we put the um in position put a little bit of oil on top of the scroll there okay and <clears throat> that'll have to go down and I always put a little drop, drop of oil not a lot in, in in the grooves here okay and then little bit there that not too much because if you put too much in you put too much in and you get you <coughs> depending on the speed of the uh, spindle it will only splash out okay so first you've got to line up the number one and you'll see the scroll coming around here look see that's really it's just that's past it there it's just going around now so you get your first one and you put your number one in there. It's, it's a reverse jaws, okay? So just turn it and there it started it. So if you move it back there, that is the number two position. So you get the number two one, which is that one with a bigger, slightly bigger thing there, as you can see the lead actually it's the lead and then I've just got to put a bit of oil on this one not a lot just a little bit I have cleaned them previously as well anyway so there's your number two okay and then it helps if you if you just hold these two put a little bit of pressure on the number one's okay but if you just keep a pressure on that number two so it they're still locked in okay and then come back around now to number three it's the only one that you've got left anyway and you'll see that the lead is a lot lot bigger I uh, see yes the lead in there see so that's why you know it's number three so I'll put a little drop of oil on this one and then it should all line up but it is possible it is possible to put these in out of sync and then they won't close they won't close uniformly and uh, it can be a bit frustrating so if you bear that in mind all you newcomers to, to turning um, 
um, you should you should find it useful. So there's number three, and it's elementary actually. That, uh, but then again, for you new people, you'll see that the jaws are configured differently. So that to get on the outer side of the reverse jaws, the, the scrolls have to be the same, but the it's machined differently. So there's a number three. Mm. Right. So one and one, two is fine. Three is still slotted in. Let's put a bit of pressure on just to make sure it's, it's winding in. They all are. And then it's winding in, okay? So, just a minute. Just get rid of the grease on my hands. What do you think to this, uh, this camera mount? It's the lighting problem we've got, I suppose, now. But uh, I think it seems, it seems to be working okay. Hmm. Yeah. Get a bit of light on the position there. Um, here we go. Now you'll notice that there's some a little bit of debris on the on the inner grips there, which I want out. So I'll just check round to make sure you've got you've got the bits off, okay? You know, so I'm hanging onto this chuck <laughs> with a key because as soon as I move away, from, you always take your your key with you, never leave it in the chuck, never ever leave it in the chuck, not even for a second, because it's it's a it's a disaster waiting to happen if you get into that bad habit, because it's easily easily forgotten that you've done it, and uh, I know because I did it once <laughs> many years ago, so that's right, that's what we're doing there. Now this is a Bernard three door chuck and that piece that I took out before, in fact there's a little bit more muck in there which I'm not happy about, I've got to try to get that out, uh, whoa, come on that's it, I oh, see, that's how I think you, you think you've cleaned it and they don't it was something else. Not that out. A little bit of bent rod does the trick. Okay. So I'm happy about that now. So I'm going to mount this now in the this piece I made earlier, um, which I took out of the chuck, which had the normal jaws in. But I want to and look to, to, to check it. Look before you put anything in, just just wind it round, wind it down, and check it to see that it's lining up in the centre. Which is which it is perfectly, so that means we we have set it up right. Believe me, if you don't, because it's it, it's easily easily done, that you try to set it up in the correct numbers, <coughs> and uh, if you've not kept a bit of a pressure on it, could miss the slot, and go down round a revolution, and uh, it won't work. So anyway, there we are. So I'm going to set this up in that configuration there for a special reason and that's it 
So what's the special reason? I couldn't do it in the other chuck because I want a little space in between um, this. Oh. Let me find out. Oh. Yeah, I want a little space between the edge of the back edge of this disc and the chuck. So I want a bit of clearance there. See? For something I want to do. Okay, I'll tell you about that later. Now, before, in the other chuck, it was right up against the face there of the chuck. Didn't give me the clearance, so that's why we've had to change it round. Okay, and that's mounting on that perfectly. So, I'll just nip it up there. One. Evenly. And that's it. So, oops, put that down. So that's the procedure for putting the reverse jaws in the three jaw chuck. But I'll tell you, if anyone has got an old lathe or just buying one and money's a bit short and the lathe you've got chuck's no good or whatever um, and you want to and you want to get a choice of uh, I'll come back up here now and you want to get you have a choice of chuck but uh, you don't which one to buy I always advocate buy a four jaw chuck because the four jaw chuck is much more versatile you can do exactly what you do with a three jaw chuck and uh, in many cases you can do it better so um, that's it, cash is short up for the four jaw chuck and you get practice at it you can you can set it up any item on a four jaw chuck just as accurate and sometimes more accurate than the three jaw chuck i'm telling you so um anyway i'm going to wind back up here look at this i'm tracking out <laughs> i think uh, at the moment this uh, this new camera mount's working quite well so we just try it again coming on here like that oh. At this <laughs> yeah so um, that's it and, oh <laughs> that's just a bit, uh, bit dodgy there but anyway um, I hope you like this little video and I could do with some more uh, <clears throat> comments welcome comments and also um subscribers no subscribers i haven't had any subscribers for two weeks now and uh so this will be the third week actually so i would appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel and uh, uh, also check this video out you might like that and i'll catch you next time so hope to see you shortly bye bye